If we're configuring routing on our devices, we're setting up a router, we're configuring how we would like these routing protocols to operate. Are we going to do static routing? Are we going to use dynamic routing protocols? All of these things go into the config. And if we're having a problem right out of the gate, and we're not able to send traffic across the network, and we're not able to receive traffic from what's coming to us, then we probably have some type of configuration issue. And when you're initially setting up a router, you can almost bet that there's going to be some type of config problem you're going to need to troubleshoot. Now, if the router's been running for a while and you suddenly have a complete failure of traffic, there's just no communication whatsoever, that's obviously a pretty big concern. We want to look into our router and understand more about why it's not able to communicate or why it's only able to communicate out and we're not receiving any information back. That's usually some type of routing issue some, somewhere in the network. Sometimes the route may be there and the route might disappear. And then the route might come back, and then it'll disappear again because we may be using a dynamic routing protocol that automatically updates all the routers and informs them of where all of the routes are. But let's say you have a remote site that is having some type of communication problem to the site. Maybe it's your wide area network provider, and they're having issues, and that network connection keeps disappearing. It keeps being cut off from the rest of the world. We may have our routing tables updating all of the time. You have what we call a flapping site. It's coming on, it's coming off, it's coming on, it's coming off. And we have to now watch for those routes. We may find that sometimes we can connect to a site, other times we cannot, because our routing tables are constantly and dynamically updating themselves. Now, if we're using static routing, then our routes never change. We're simply sending the information out. And because we have no idea whether that route is seen by anyone else, we're hoping for the best and hoping that it can get there. So we might see the traffic go all the way there during one part of the day and then suddenly not have communication to that site. Sometimes it's relating to the routing configurations or the connectivity we have between routers in our network. When you're troubleshooting routers, you really go back to basics. This is nothing more than following your routing tables as it goes through every route along the path. So you'll want to perform a trace route and get an understanding of exactly where these packets are going, what routers they happen to be hopping through, so you know exactly where you should be going to which devices, and you'll understand now what routing tables you need to look at. You may have to look in both directions, of course. This is a common mistake, is that we might set up our routes to go all the way out to a remote site, and we've gone through every single router, and we can see the path all the way through to the other side as exactly as we might expect, and we don't understand why we're not receiving any communicating to the other side. Well, we didn't check the other direction, of course. Not only do the routes have to be the correct way going out, but then we have to turn around and think about the packet as it comes the other direction and make sure the routing tables are pointing the right way there as well. Often when you're working with an internet type connection or you're working for from a connection you don't have access to, you're going to have to call your internet service provider and tell them, what do you see inside of the routing tables associated with the connection we have between you and us? Maybe we've set up some new connections on our side. Maybe we've brought up some new IP addresses on our outside link. We'll have to tell that third party that now you should be sending all of that information to us as well. Otherwise, we'll be sending information out, and it will have no idea how to get back to us. If your router is using dynamic routing tables, well, that makes it a little bit easier to troubleshoot because we can simply watch the updates as they come through. We can do that as packet captures. A number of routers have ways to look at what the differences are between these updates as they're coming through. So we can start to see what routes are here right now, now let's look two minutes later. Is there any change? Let's look a couple minutes after that. What's changed there? So you can start to see when routes might be disappearing from the routing table. That way you know you're sending information into the router and you're not getting a response. You know immediately it's because that route disappeared in the routing table. We now need to go understand why there's a router somewhere else in our network that thinks that that route went away. And if you have a topology map and you've documented exactly where all of these routes are in your network, it makes it it's so much easier to try to figure out where you might be losing connectivity because you need to figure out the entire path to that remote site in back. It's nice if you can look on the map and see exactly the path that that packet is supposed to take. 
if you're on a network really of almost any size, you probably are using different tools to monitor your routers and monitor your switches. A very common way to do that is using the SNMP protocol, the Simple Network Management Protocol. That's exactly what it's designed to do. You have a management station, and you query the router. And you ask, how much traffic has gone through the Ethernet 1 port? How much traffic has gone through port 2? How much traffic has gone through port 3? How have there been any errors, any CRC errors or corruption of the packets that have gone through those ports? That might give you an idea of when problems might be occurring. You can even ask for detailed information. Tell me what all of the routes are that this particular device knows about, and you can track those over time. So you can get a feel of throughput. You can get a feel for any errors that might be occurring, and just ongoing maintenance and monitoring of all of the routes going through that particular device. You can also use tools on your desktop, like ping and trace route, to see if the configuration of these routes and the configuration of the path from point A to point B is really what you might be expecting. If there's any problems in between, you may notice that the route is not taking the route that it normally takes. So you may have to call a third party with your ISP, or you may have to look into the health and the availability of the routers on your network to make sure that they're still up and running and they're processing the traffic the way you would expect. By configuring your routers, having documentation of the configuration of your network, and constantly monitoring the path between point A and point B, you'll have an understanding of exactly the way your traffic should be traversing through all of the routers on your network.